much intends to grow, I would say, modestly, but still in a significant way its enrollments. Um, and to do so requires us to either um, reduce the quality of our academic programs by increasing class sizes or to hire new faculty and staff to support them, which means we're very quickly running out of space. And I was fortunate that Joe Holt, um, the interim vice president before me and his um, predecessor, Lim um, Jim Monero, had put plans in place to build the new academic building on the site of the uh, former Board of Education building. Um, we had hoped to raise full funding for that and are well into that and plan to raise um, significant amounts more, but we will need some debt to bridge the construction of that building. At the same time, we also are faced with um, a housing shortage. If we're to grow as we expect um, at least a couple hundred students over the next several years, we're going to need to have residence hall space for those students. And we also have a problem that I wasn't aware of until I'd spent some time at Washington College, and that is that a lot of the residence halls that we do have are severely in need of renovation. And there's only one way to renovate a residence hall that is as far behind its um, uh, maintenance schedule as, as some of ours, and that's to take it offline and um, for as much as a year, which means we have even more need for residence hall space. And so after much consultation with our Board of Visitors and Governors, it was decided um, in February that we would move forward with the construction um, of a third <coughs> residence hall um, uh, that was planned back in the late 2000s. Um, and our last series of debt, um, for construction at least, was um, financed uh, two of those, but the third was pulled at the last moment because um, the, my predecessor, again, didn't feel that our enrollment um, required it. We do need it now, and so um, we're faced with a package of improvements, um, planned construction, and now new construction of a residence hall of about $20 million. And the board has given me um, permission to move forward um, with the um, issuance of debt of up to $20 million. Uh, that is well within our debt capacity. Um, both our current um, um, bondholder, PNC, um, and uh, RBC Capital Markets have agreed to work with us. PNC has agreed to allow us to go forward um, in that it does not violate our current bond covenants. Um, and uh, RBC Capital Markets is representing us um, in the in this, um, issuance of this bond. And what we ask from you is um, that the town serve as issuer as it has in prior series of um, college debt. Um, this allows us to um, get lower cost um, financing because of the tax exempt status of the, of the um, uh, town. Um, and I think really helps us continue a relationship with the town that I, I, I feel has been mutually beneficial and that I hope will be, um, continue to be mutually beneficial. I, I would point out, um, perhaps just because I signed the requisition for it, that the new um, construction of the new residence hall actually results in a payment of nearly a quarter of a million dollars to the town for water and sewer service to the new residence hall. So again, I think these are projects that both serve the, the college and serve the town. Um, uh, I would add that the, the construction of the new academic building um, essentially takes a, a vacant building that was uh, beginning to be a bit of blight on, on the town of Chestertown and allows us to develop it into a space that not only serves the college's needs but also provides, as it has in the past, um, space for the community and the park that will be preserved along Philosopher's Terrace. Um, so. I, I present these needs and this request to you, um, uh, feeling that uh, while this is a great service to the college and the part of the town, uh, we feel that it also adds to um, the town itself just by, by the benefit of these projects. You, uh, before you close the dorm down, you're going to have some place to put them on college. Yes, though. yes. Yeah, we're you're not going to close the dorms down before you? No, no, no. I mean, we have off-campus off kids and we have enough of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm keenly aware of that. And I, you know, as I was just getting to understand the dynamics, I, I came from Charlottesville, Virginia, where there's plenty of off campus housing. And in fact, private landlords are more than eager to take. The, the, the argument goes the other way. They don't want the university building dorms because it takes away from, you know, the demand for off campus housing. Um, here I realize that if Washington College is going to grow. We need to have partnerships with private developers. We need to build our own, you know, and we're hoping to pursue um, our planned enrollment growth with a combination of strategies. But needing to take a residence hall as, down as early as next um, summer will require us to have one there to accommodate that um, swing of demand. 
and we will have, um, with the uh, construction of Corsica Hall, we will have that, that space in place. The other item is, um, I had an email from um, an individual who attempted unsuccessfully to be part of the farmer's market, and she was kind of, I know there's a lot more to the story maybe than I was told, but I just kind of wanted to help others that might be interested in coming to the farmer's market to get, uh, take this opportunity to bring some clarification as to what products are supposed to be at the farmer's portion of the farmer's market, maybe what products go to the, are supposed to be in the artisan's market, and what the process is for getting into the farmer's market. And Linda, I know that you are, this is kind of like your area. Well, so can, let's start with the farmer's market. Okay, so what the, type of products? Um, the farmer's market is, um, where do I have this now? It's, produce, it's a produce only market. Um, vegetables, herbs, trees, flowers, plants. Um, and we do have meat. Uh, I, I scratched through seafood here. Uh, we haven't had seafood in the market, and in my opinion, it's too risky. Um, and the farmer's market must be grown or raised by the farmer. No reselling of any products are permitted. And all farmers agree to an on-site inspection of their growing operations. We pay a market manager, farmer's market manager, who is supposed to have the first say in yes, yes or no and space availability to come into the market. Um, we did a draft of the um, farmer's market rules and regulations some time ago. Was it? It was sometime last year. And since then, there, there need to be changes in it too because of the farmer's market operating 12 months out of the year, and the times. We now have the signs where the market is 8 o'clock to noon, and it spells out what time the farmer should arrive to set up. And um, let's see. Every person who comes to the farmer's market agrees to provide proof of insurance, labeling, that, that complies with the um, Department in Hel of Health and Mental Hygiene uh, Office of Food Protection and Con Con Consumer Health Services. Um, it's the cost of being in the market. Contract, um, that there is a current contract with each vendor on file <coughs> with the town um, of Chestertown. And, um, space availability, appearance, safety, um, like I said before, fees, equipment and supplies, um, and there's nothing in here about conflict resolution because, and I'm only bringing that up, is because the artisan's contract has conflict resolution in it. In other words, what if the vendor protests not being included, how does that get addressed? Or, no, conflicts within the market. We don't have that. And finally, I want to address what uh, Jen brought up, the election coming up. I'm asked from time to time if I'm going to run for re-election. And uh, I, I can see that happening more often now that this, this uh, schedule is put out. I really haven't made up my mind, and that's purposefully, because I spent a year or better than a year on this council where everybody was running either for re-election or another office. And the perception, my perception, and apparently some of the public's perception was the business was being conducted with the idea, will I lose economic support or will I lose a vote if I do this or do that? And I had made up my mind, I'd be darned if I was going to do that. I'll make up my mind 60 days before the election, which is plenty of time to. 